Okay, beautiful. So let's have you continue defining this for us, like with here in the doc. So we kind of talked about this permanent cessation while conscious. Okay, well, we'll go to the unaltered state of consciousness. So another way to look at this is that everything before the natural state, which is what's always been the case, um, is an altered state of consciousness. The egoic state is an altered state of consciousness. It's insanity. It's psychotic. You think your thoughts are real. You think you're a separate person. That's an altered state. Let's take a moment to seriously make sure that this is being understood because this is basically reversing the entire paradigm of the world on its head. So it's basically saying that the ego or separation and all of the conditioning and attachments of the that contracted energy entity, that is the altered state. That is the altered state of consciousness is believing that I am a separate, finite, physical entity in a world full of other separate, finite, physical entities. That's the altered state. And then uh, that's a really big paradigm shift. Okay. Well, I mean, moving from that to uh, the altered state of mystical experiences, let's say you're, you've yeah. been equal all your life. Now you took psychedelics. Now you think, holy shit, this is so much more real. But that's also an altered state. And we go to meditation, we should experience jhanas and kundalini awakenings, uh, even you know, merging with God, divine union, cosmic bliss, all the stuff you read about spirituality. From the perspective of the ego state, that is much more true and yes. much more spacious and much more relaxed state. And but, unaltered, yes. But it, that, but now that's still an altered state of consciousness. But yes, it's more not, unaltered. Yes. It's a little bit more unaltered, but it's still altered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in some cases, it's more altered. But they're, they're both altered. Doesn't no matter how, how yes, yes. It's more altered. They're both altered state of But it's giving you a taste of the unaltered, which is then what gives you the North Star and the roadmap. Right. Yeah. Right. So after you uh, dis disidentify for all the altered state of consciousness and you slip into the natural state, that's the unaltered state of consciousness. That's total sanity. Because clinging on to universal mind or the individual mind is the same thing. From the unaltered state of perfect equanimity, where all sensations are in equal footing, you look at your past uh, levels of identification to realize that attachment to the solidity of the ego versus the attachment to the solidity of mystical experiences are actually the same thing. They both uh, create uh, cleanliness and suffering. That's why the Buddha said that not only do you have to let go of the material realm, the form realm, you have to let go of the formless realms. Yes. You can't yes. be stuck in the golden chain yes. of jhanas and yes. like trips and mystical experiences. But, but but I will go ahead. I, I just I just wanted to briefly say that uh, just to put a little flag in it, just that it is still really important as people are stuck in physicalism to point people towards the formless, to towards consciousness. Of course, yes, 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 yes. That's why the stages are are, are there. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. You just uh, there's some people that just jump from like stage one to five. They fucking go insane, man. <laughs> oh, dude. But oh, here's the thing, here's the point that's very important. See, the people who hasn't experienced the non-experience of our true nature, when they only have the egoic state in the mystical experiences to compare their experiences with, they're always going to be confused. They're always going to think the, uh, the, uh, the outer state of mystical experiences, the God consciousness on psychedelics or meditation or spontaneous glimpses, temporarily transcending the self. They're always going to think that's enlightenment. Yeah. Yep. They're always going to confuse that with enlightenment because they have, they, they've only got the two outer states to compare it from. Of course, the, the mystical experience is all the unity consciousness. Yes, yes. It's always going to be more enlightened than the ego yes, state. Yes, you know, there's, there's more to disidentify. Yeah, so that, that's, that's why, why the it, ego it, attaches it, to the mystical experiences and says this is it, yeah. Yeah, and, and before you have a realization, which is the, the, the locking of uh, the true nature, it's, in, it's really, really difficult to see this. Because I, I've been trying to tell people the difference between mystical experiences, which is the temporary transcendence of the self, which the self always comes back because it's not a realization yet, versus the permanent dropping away of the self, which yeah. is the realization. Jeez. A huge difference there. Yeah. And if you hasn't if you haven't had a realization, and a realization can only occur like naturally. You, you, there, there's no realization on a, a, a psychedelic trip when you're high. I mean, maybe there is, but like it's so filtered, you, you can't extract it. Right. So <sighs> when, when I keep trying to tell people that dude, there is a difference 
between a realization and an experience between dropping away of the center permanently versus yeah. just temporarily transcending itself. Because when you still have a center in the head, when you fix <sighs> the balance, no matter how crazy this experience is, it's still gonna be filtered through whatever solidity that's in the head. If you're in the beginning of the path, the solidity is your entire body mind. Once you get to the very end of the path, the solidity could be this tiny little atom somewhere yeah. like in the head, somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. still going to get in the way of infinity, closing in on itself into this figure A loop. And the 99% and 100% is quantum. It's a different yeah. order together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just so much of like a relief. So so what is what is wisdom? What is insight and wisdom? If I if I may if I may read the <clears throat> I'll pull it up for people. And for people that are getting kind of confused and scared, I'll, I'll just remind you one thing. Wisdom is not something you accumulate with the mind or something you read in spiritual books. Wisdom <laughs> is taking away all the falsehood until you left with what is now we talk about a lot of crazy ships like you know oh your awareness is going from 720 to 1080 to 4k to 360 8k you're like what the fuck? how do i get that well let me ask you is reality panoramic and 360 if so then that's why you are it's always been the case it's always been the case does the universe have a center point if not then you don't have a center because you're the universe it's very simple and this is the sentence Relief of being literally nobody. What, what book is that? That is something? Yeah. Um, yes. Relief of being literally nobody. That is when you're dropping into this emptiness, you're dropping into this no self, you're dropping into slowly into this natty state, you're just kind of dropping in easily, and it's just this relief of not needing to be anyone, a relief of knowing that you're nothing along with everything and that you can just peacefully relax all of the contracted conditioning that you built up over the years of wanting to be seen as an individual, wanting to be seen as a somebody, although we are still that spark of the infinite like we mentioned, but all of that contracted energy that built up around all of the conditioning from your childhood and all of the things of wanting to impress other people and to have all of this money and success and fame and, oh, if I just or get a, a or being a spiritual cunt, just exactly, especially that one has been so important for me recently to be practicing that one more and more of just letting go of needing to be seen as a spiritual cunt. Seriously, so the relief of being literally nobody. The, the ultimate attainment is non-attainment. <laughs> the, the nirvana is the last layer of the dream. The nirvana is the last layer of the dream. The, bra, the Brahman, once you get so deep, you become Brahman, that's the last layer of the dream. You go so deep, you're like, holy shit, man, this is a Brahman, everything's Brahman. But even that could be disidentified from. Ultimate attainment is non-attainment. But this is when you have the reflexivity to switch lenses. Okay, on Monday, I'm gonna use the emptiness lens. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have a Tinder day and this Tinder day is a Buddhist. Oh, I'm gonna put on an emptiness lens. Hey man, this is gonna rise and brah. I finish it already. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Let's, 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 you go down to the day, and this girl is uh, he, she studied Hinduism. You put on a Brahmin lens, you're like everything's unified mind. Okay, we just we just mentioned this one: the relief of being literally nobody, which is great. The dying into the ordinary. Oh, we haven't mentioned that one. Yeah, that one's so important. Really, I I, I can only relate to that one from a direct experience where. You're literally, it, it's like, it's kind of like being a permanent acid trip, except it's deeper than that because in the natural state, there's neither an experience nor a mind, right? So it's even deeper than mind brain experience, but it's very similar to being on acid all the time where you look at anything at all, you just see the entire universe in there. 
you don't see infinite like zooms you just you just it, it's just timeless it's just i don't know you can just like you know how you're a little kid and you're just in a in a sandbox and you're just like playing with sand playing with leaves just you know looking at bullshit and then there's just no time you don't have to go anywhere and, and that's yeah. that's your moment to moment experience in a natural state yeah um, and it, 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 it i remember it, um when i was shifting into the state when i was still kind of dissolving when i read that i it, i was like holy shit this is exactly what it feels like because it, it, it literally feels like your your every moment is like disjointed right and each moment you're being reborn and being reincarnated and each moment when you look at like i was swiping my um i was wiping my ass and then i was like looking at my poop and i could i could feel like just my sense of self just come even the last speck of it just completely dying into the into the toilet paper and there's nothing but the toilet paper you know what i mean and then, but then as long as i move the toilet paper there's another a new dimension in, it, in the, the last one mm -hmm. and then you kind of move mm -hmm. this process a little bit where you literally every moment it feels like you're really dying into this disjointed frame and then after a while it just becomes uh more stabilized and once you're all dead you don't feel like you're dying anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's when you feel the most alive, right? Ah, you, you, you transcend the duality yeah. between existence and non-existence, between life and death. Gosh. And don't fear this process of dying. Know that it's a natural part of the spiritual awakening and that it's only going to make you an even better steward and shepherd of the reality awakening to its nature. It'll only make you more pure in the process yeah yeah well spiritual speaking of the the process again there are two major shifts on the spiritual path one is the move from ego to being the move from ego to awareness or consciousness or god all that's being stuff the second move which is that that's that's painful that's dying for a lot of people that's that, you know that's literally death right that's very difficult dark nights dark nights after dark nights the second stage sorry the second phase the second shift from being from existence from infinity to non-being to nothingness that hurts even more because you're letting go of even god yeah that hurts even more because you're letting go of this of infinite field that you thought to be you you have to decide anything from that and that hurts even more that's why most people don't make it that far <laughs> I, I always say that um waking up or di di dissolving the ego is uh awakening Dissolving even God is the natural state, is in life. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not making a claim about the ontological existence of God or not. All that's completely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not. And you, and you could, <clears throat> you could, if you were just using the word God to reference the highest or the absolute, you could just use it to reference the coin that we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. that one side is emptiness, the other side's infinity. Yeah, that, that, that's why this picture there. Because in a natural state, you can call yourself a monkey or a god or a human being or a table, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like you can go start, the, the difference is during the during the god phase, I can feel my ego popping up when I look at the word god or when I communicate with another spiritual con and we're talking about god realization. I can feel my ego popping up. This is because we associated the word God with the capital S self. This yeah, is why yeah. versus if you also were to associate God with emptiness or with no self or with Tao or the Natty state, then you could say that this is God in yeah, yeah. the shape yeah. of the coin of emptiness and infinity with the, you could say, consciousness or awareness as this primary attribute of the power to know yeah so so in the natural state you could when, when i say i'm god or i'm awareness or i'm monkey or uh, i'm pranking it makes absolutely no difference there, there's no trigger there's no preference there's no contraction of any of these there it is yeah. levels. That's, that's the only difference really but it's all yeah. the same the difference yeah. is the contraction identification yes, yes. Thinking yes. Something, that's it yes beautiful yeah so we're not moving any stages okay the disappearing into the dark light of the absolute. You said this was a Nisargatata Maharaj phrase. Yeah, uh, Adyashante also used the dark light to uh, describe no self, um, because, like we said before, it's almost it's the combination of infinity versus nothingness. Yeah. So it's both dark and light. Beautiful. It's both disappearing and dying into the extraordinary, 
while manifesting this infinite consciousness and field of experience. Perfect. Then let's do life fucking itself and closing the infinity loop. Uh, well, closing the infinity loop is just the point I'm making about how if there's still a solidity in the body mind or anywhere in the field of experience, um, infinity cannot uh, fully comprehend itself thoroughly. Yes, yes. You yes. know how those, uh, the, the logo or the animation of uh, of the figure eight or the snake, cosmic snake biting or, something? Or Boros, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's going infinitely like this, right? If there's a speck in there, it, it, it won't close. It won't it, close. It, yeah. So even that little bit of, even if it's at the level of, even if you've popped beyond the egoic separate conditioning to even awareness or you know, consciousness of God. consciousness, it says, even if, even if you're there that <clears throat> even if you've started to taste a little bit of infinity and emptiness and when I, if you've tasted it, you'll still have these bits of the separate self that are there. And this is what you're referencing perpetually, which is the difference between getting to the point of sort of like 99% dissolving that all the way down to that poof. It's yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, that's the difference between you as a separate entity having an experience of awareness, consciousness, or the divine, versus just reality being itself. That's yes. how you can yes. think about it. Yeah. It's Say not a, okay. It's not a separate it, 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 entity right. having the realization of the divine, but it's life recognizing the divine. Yeah, just life being itself. Life being itself. Yeah. Say anything uh, about you know, this process is, is saying too much. Even saying infinity penetrating itself, eternity gazing back itself, it's saying a little bit too much. Okay, yeah. cool. That that we just covered that as well. And, and that's the difference between like, you know how people get into the later stages of jhanas? They, they, get, they do get into infinite consciousness, but the teacher will tell them, hey, you're still stuck in the golden chain of the formless realm because they're experiencing infinite consciousness as a meditator. Mm. First, the solution of the meditator where yeah. there's only yeah exactly so Not rather a, than having the experience yeah. of the divine as a separate entity it's yeah. life itself just yeah. that's it just that's it that's, it. So, so yeah. that's again it's a difference between transcendence of the self which is the quick glimpse and this yeah. glimpse can last sometimes for months or five seconds versus the permanent dropping away of the self yeah, yeah. beautiful and life fucking itself also is deeply at play with dependent origination as well that it collapses the witness the witnessing and the witnessed into yes. one and that's yeah. what this uni locality yeah. is so dependent origination is very interesting because it's basically the notion that everything's interconnected everything's interpenetrated everything is you know codependent arising right so without a you there there won't be a me here and we're all connected to infinite webs of conditioning that yes, are right yes. And the reason why de uh, dependent origination is never talked about is because without realizing emptiness and no self, you cannot perceive dependent origination in real time. And then mm -hmm. without perceiving dependent origination in real time, you're always going to be standing on the ground. For example, the move from ego to consciousness is understanding that the self, the thinker, the ego, is just another thought, right? Before you used to think that the, the Frank Yang is the thinker and this mm -hmm. thinker is popping out thoughts. But then after stream entry, you realize that this Frank Yang character, this avatar is just another thought, no different from any other thoughts. It's not the generator of thoughts. It's not the creator of thoughts, it's not the thinker of thought. It's in itself, it's just another thought that's empty with no one behind it, popping in and out of nothing. No different from any other thought. That's stream entry. To move from stream entry to the later stages, you have to apply that process of self-inquiry into the big self, into even the God mind. Now, if dependent origination is true, then consciousness or the ground of being, whatever ground of being that you identify yourself with, either that's God mind or Brahman, that's also dependent originating. Because consciousness mm -hmm. is the result of the dependent origination between the observer, perception, uh, the object of perception, it's dependent on all kinds of stuff to be able to, you know, generate this experience of consciousness.